Newcastle United will be playing European football next season. That's right, after Newcastle's 3-1 win against Southampton. Three wins in a week. 13 goals in a week. It's confirmed Newcastle will finish the season in a European spot. But we're not done yet. Uh, obviously, that's for 7th place. Uh, Europa Conference League. Then it's Europa League. We want to be finishing in one of those top four spots to try and get Champions League football. Uh, and it all starts again this weekend as we take on Arsenal at St. James's Park. We remember what happened when we played them last season was one of the best games of the season, one of the best games I've ever been to for atmosphere. We saw us beat Arsenal, stop them from getting Champions League football. Hopefully we can take a step closer to Champions League football and war flags are asking for your help. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Eddie Howe has made a new signing. That's right, it's not even the summer window and we are making deals behind the scenes. Uh, youngster Lewis Miley has signed his first professional contract. I want to talk a little bit about him, a little bit about how things are changing behind the scenes with Eddie Howe, Dan Ashworth, youngsters and homegrown players which we could really do with a few more of uh, as we progress into European football. Um, loads of talk on this summer window, and we're also doing things behind the scenes in the commercial department as well. It's reported this week that Newcastle have indeed agreed a new shirt sponsor for next season. It's reportedly going to make us three times as much as Funny 88 is right now. On top of that, Things are also starting to be revealed or being reported as to how much the TV money's going to be, how much money we're even getting from the Amazon documentary as well. So in terms of FFP, uh, we could have a bit more to spend going into this summer window. And in terms of new shirts, could the new shirt be unveiled pretty soon? It's reported it will be revealed this month and um, there's loads of sales going on in the club shop for some of the older stuff as well. So I'll tell you about that in this video. Um, and as always, if you guys do watch Toon Tuesdays every week, be sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, this is a weekly news show with everything Newcastle. Loads to talk about as always. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Starting off with the fact that, as I've mentioned, Newcastle have secured themselves European football next season. That's right, after a fair few years now since that season where um, Cissé, Denver Bar, Alan Pardew uh, took us to that fifth place finish. Newcastle will be back in European football for the first time in 10 years-ish. But, um, as I've mentioned, we aren't stopping yet. Uh, we're in a great spot right now, currently third in the league, and we want to really see this season out with a high. It's not often you win three games in a week and you score 13 goals in a week. It was one hell of a week for Newcastle United and going in against an Arsenal side who are trying to fight for their first Premier League title in some time as well. I don't think it'll be an easy game this weekend, but you've got to think, or for me... We are, since that loss against Villa, we are we are pushing up and up and up. And I just feel like Arsenal at the moment are just wavering a little bit. The wheels are starting to fall off, man. City, City are on the hunt. And for Arsenal, they need to come and get three points at St. James's Park. And as we know, it, it's not an easy task. Newcastle have only lost four times all season. And we aren't going to make it easy for them. To add to that... Um, Arsenal will remember exactly what happened last time around they were at St. James's Park. They didn't want it, we did, and we took the win. Now, don't get me wrong, they are a good side, and we cannot um, expect to win in this one at all. Of anything, you know, Arsenal, because of what happened last time, Arteta will make sure that they've got their heads above the sand for this one. They cannot go sleepwalking into St. James's Park or we will rip them apart. So I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to be tight. I think us taking on anybody at home, I will back us. And I will be doing a full preview later in the week. So if you're not subscribed again, be sure to do so. Look out for that. But yeah, it's big. And in talking of big and talking about our last time in a European competition, we all remember Cissé, remember Demba Bar, how great that partnership was. Well, 
Isaac and Wilson aren't too far off it either. Just a handful more goals and Isaac and Wilson will have a better combined tally than the pair of them did, which is mad. Um, I know I've been great. I know everyone's enjoying this season, but I think because it's just kind of all happening so fast, I don't, I don't feel like I'm actually stopping and appreciating just how good we've been. We scored 13 goals this week. It's not been bad. Um, and as I say... We push on against Arsenal and we push on into the rest of this season. And Eddie Howe is not just thinking about this season, he's obviously thinking about the future as well. As Newcastle have given uh, Lewis Miley his first professional contract, in fact on his 17th birthday. So happy birthday to you mate, well done on the contract. We have seen a little bit of him over the last few years, he was one of the players that Eddie Howe actually took out to Saudi Arabia when we played in the little tournament out there. I'm pretty sure he actually featured in the friendly game we played against uh, Rio Vallecano in December time after we came back from the World Cup. I'm sure we saw a little bit of minutes from him then. He is a local lad. He's from Stanley and he um, joined Newcastle at age seven. So 10 years later, he signed his first professional deal. He actually said that um, it's a really good feeling to sign for my, for my first professional contract, especially with my boyhood club. It's something that I've always dreamed of since I was a kid. So well done to you, mate. Attacking midfielder. And it's nice to see, you know, young lads reaching through the academies and starting to, to come into the first team, into the squad. He actually was on the bench, I think, against Bournemouth earlier this season. And yeah, we've seen the likes of Longstaff having a fantastic season for us. Um, obviously, Dummett's still in there as well. We've seen Elliot Anderson start to get more and more game time. Still a bit of a question mark on him, in fairness, as to whether he has had enough game time or whether it would have been better off letting him go out. But, yeah, it's been great. And to see more of that coming through is going to be big. You know, we've brought in the likes of Dan Ashworth to not just look at bringing the new superstars to the club, but also looking at some of the younger players coming in as well, and not just younger players from other teams, which we've kind of already seen a little bit of. We saw the uh, the lad from um, Kilmarnock come down and sign. We've obviously seen um, the Aussie lad come over as well. To have a few from inside our own academies kind of coming up is, is going to be very important as well. And kind of casting the net to try and bring in the youngsters to Newcastle as early as possible so we can train them up and, and put them through. And that and it all comes back to academies, training grounds, you know, it's, it's, it's all in the wider net. You know, right now it's very Newcastle, top four, please get there, summer window. But, you know, outside of that, there is so much going on. Um, and as I mentioned, in terms of getting into European football and meeting some of these quarters that you need to have. Now, um, it isn't just players from England, but it is in fact homegrown players as well. I believe it's four players to be in the squad who have been graduates of your academy, have spent enough time at your academy. Longstaff's one, Dummett's two, Elliot Anderson's in there, but then the question mark is, is Elliot Anderson need to be registered or is he still young enough? Maybe he has to be registered this year. Um, but the likes of Lewis Miley, you wouldn't actually need to register him because he's under the age of... Um, 21 anyway so it, that's when you're like is Dummett going to get a new deal well probably because we actually haven't got any other academy play well players through the academy that are over the age of 21 and if you can have them in there it's better than not having them and it's the same with Gillespie I'm not sure that he was actually at the academy long enough to count that's why people are talking about going out and signing ex-Newcastle players and bringing them back. Ivan Tony's been all over the shop in terms of can we get him back to, to meet, help meet our quota as well. I don't think Ivan Tony was here long enough either. Uh, Fraser Foster was, so could he be someone that we look at as well? But the point is... We're growing, we're building from the academy, uh, and big up to the young lad to get his first professional contract. Uh, in terms of going out and signing players this summer window, we could probably do with a bit of money. Uh, I, I mentioned this in a video earlier in the week, the conversation where Eddie Howard said, we don't have a bottomless pit of money. Well, I think the answer is, we actually do have a bottomless pit of money. I'm pretty sure the owners of PIF have plenty of money. It's the restrictions that we are under as to how much we can spend 
of that money, which I'm pretty sure is what Eddie Howe meant. But um, how can we improve? How can we be allowed to spend more money? Go out and get new sponsorships. Go out and, well, get Champions League football would be a good start. The increase in revenue through getting to Champions League for our league position is one thing, but the, the TV money coming in from featuring, who knows how far we can make it in that tournament. It'll be a, it'll be a, a challenge. That will be no doubt next season. You've got to think we've had a very good season with the cup final run in the League Cup, which was... That was good, but it's not the same as playing every single Tuesday or Wednesday every week in against like elite sides every game. You'd love to finish back up in the regions of where we did this season, next season, but unless we invest in the squad and the players in the summer, that's two very tough tournaments to do. You think about the likes of Liverpool and oh, well Chelsea, certainly. Liverpool are looking very unlikely at the minute to grab... Well, who knows what European football they may grab, but Chelsea won't have to concentrate on that next season. They will just have the Premier League, like we did this season. So, yeah, there's a lot going on, and I think we're pretty much all in agreement that we need to go and spend money this summer window. Now, it's being reported that Newcastle will make upwards of £125 million just from TV revenue in the Premier League this season. Uh, that isn't too bad, is it? Because of how much we've been on TV, it's been every, it's been pretty much every game, uh, and that's the benefits that come with it. When you are a good side playing good football, people want to watch it. Um, Sky Sports, BT are all getting involved. There's also a lot of rumours going on right now that we could in fact see the Premier League break away full stop and start up their own Premier League TV channel. Uh, like Netflix, like Disney+, Plus, like Amazon, like Paramount. Um, I could probably go on for another... another few. There's, there's a lot out there. People are taking that away. And now TV taking their own programmes and putting them on their own stick rather than... Well, I think everyone's fed up, aren't they, to be honest, with having to pay Sky 100 quid, BT an extra 50 quid, because you need because you need this football, that football, and this football. It sounds like some of these, the Premier League and maybe a few others, um, are looking to basically pull their resources, rather than have Sky broadcast it and then buy it back off them, or they buy it off, just, just actually do it themselves. Tell you what, I'd be a lot more inclined to pay a tenner a month to just watch Premier League football than have to pay Sky, BT and everybody else to be able to watch everything. Um, so that'll be interesting to see, but generally speaking, the TV revenue is going up, is what I'm trying to say. We've seen loads of rumours about um, the Amazon documentary as well, where it's been reported that for a four episode series, Newcastle are going to get paid around 10 million. Now, obviously, that's just rumoured at the moment but 10 million ain't too bad and i don't know how much you expect to make from an amazon documentary i think what you have to add to that as well is that that will be streamed all across the world how many people in a different country who hadn't followed newcastle before are going "Ooh, i like this show maybe i should go and buy the shirt so it's not just the direct money although that will help it's also through the different revenue streams that shoot off because of that Product placements in the Amazon documentary. Look at all our new lovely shirts. Look at all. Look at Bruno. Make sure you pay the extra tenant and get Bruno on the back. It's a good idea. And talking of shirts, Newcastle are understood to have now signed and agreed a new twenty-five million pound deal for a new shirt sponsor. That is th over three times more than Newcastle are getting from. Fun 88 right now, plus noon on the side, which is reportedly around 9 million. It's adding up. It is adding up, and the spend this summer could well be pretty decent after some of these deals that have been going on behind the scenes. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, we are set to find out who that new sponsor is this month, which sounds like a big reveal. It isn't, because the, the season ends this month. Normally, at the end of May, we see the new kits released. Now, at the moment, the rumours are that it will be the... Um, obviously, that it'll be black and white. Big news, Newcastle will have a black and white home kit. No, it will. it is still thought to be Castor. Um, it's said that that deal has another year to run before we can potentially move that on. I think Castor, it's reported... 
that Castor are reluctant to to basically sign out of their deal. They've they've signed up a Newcastle club. This the they're making three new shirts a week at the moment, and everybody's buying them because everyone's so excited. And we're getting in the Champions League. It's not a bad look for Castor to have home kit, away kit, third kit, European kit, um, jackets, coats. You know, I don't know how much Newcastle were potentially offering to move them on. But I'm guessing Castor have thought, you know what, we'll probably make more by staying where we are. Um, so yes, it's, re- it's understood that the new sponsor will be revealed this month. But what I actually think is going to happen is just the new kits will be revealed this month. What used to happen is they would wear the new kit for the last game or last two games of the season to try and promote it before we even get into the window. Under the previous ownership, under Mike Ashley... There wasn't much hunger for a new kit, especially wearing it on the last day of the season when we are trying to not get relegated. It might be a bit different this season if we're wearing it for the last game and the crowd goes wild because we've just secured a top three or a top four spot. I've got a feeling that a lot of people would go out straight away and buy that new shirt. So I would fully expect to see that shirt, maybe maybe not worn before the end of the season, but certainly revealed or maybe even worn in the pre-match warm-ups just to try and show people it before the season even ends. Um, that's trying to, I suppose, get it underway and who knows what deal has actually been signed. But with the prospect of new shirts coming, it looks like we're trying to get rid of the old ones as well because right now in the club shop you can get the third kit for I think around 30, 35 quid and there's actually a deal on right now for the next 24 hours to buy the away kit with any personalisation on the back for free if you head over to the NUFC website. You can't actually buy the the green, the white kit on the website right now. I don't know if it's because it's sold out online. They definitely still have some in the shop. Those are two kits that I never actually got around to buying. So <laughs> I might have to go and get them before they all run out. And as I say, if you want to get a free player's name on the back, head over to the Newcastle website now. Um, other than that, uh, Newcastle have confirmed they will be going to the USA for their pre-season tour this summer. Um, So that's right, you don't even have to wait till we get into the European competition to go and watch Newcastle play abroad. Three three locations across Philadelphia, um, New Jersey and Atlanta. Obviously, uh, Darren Eels knows a little bit more about over there and uh, tickets were available as of right now and obviously flights aren't particularly cheap to America. But if you fancy it, be sure to get yourself over there. Alright guys, thanks for watching. As always, drop a like if you have enjoyed this week's Toon Tuesdays. As I've mentioned, loads going on at the minute, so if you're not subscribed, be sure to go and hit that big red button. Uh, I will be back to do the previews ahead of the Arsenal game at the weekend as well, uh, which I've no doubt will be a big one. Uh, War Flags um, have said, get your scarfs on for that Arsenal game. Hashtag bring your scarf. We saw how good it was for the cup games this season. We want to try and get the atmosphere. Well, the Arsenal game last season was one of the best atmospheres I ever experienced. I think this weekend could just be it. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.